Hello again, welcome to my model evaluation tutorial. In this video, I'll be covering how to, or the, the most common ways uh, to evaluate regression models. We mentioned before that the idea of regression is to predict a real value. So it's not a, it's not a class, not a nominal value, but we try to predict a real value, a number. And just to show you an example data set, um, I have in front of me here a data set for uh, CPU information and this is available through the Weka machine learning uh, uh, environment and the data looks like this I just display it uh, on my terminal so we have the relation i.e. the data set is about CPU and we have attributes we call them before attributes or features or some people call them for example uh, predictors or characteristics or descriptors it depends but they all mean the same thing. So here we have attribute MYCT, which is of type numeric, M min numeric, M max numeric, cache, CH min, CH max, and the class is numeric. So these are attributes, attribute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the class is numeric. So this is the value that we try to guess, as you can see here, numeric. And these can be, uh, you know, floating point numbers, not necessarily integers, but again, as you, as you see here, we are dealing with... Um, numeric class or real value class and we are, of course if you haven't watched my videos uh, on uh, data analysis then please do there I show you how to convert between uh, um, sort of numeric values to um, uh, nominal values and the other way around you know these these operations of um, encoding and binning and things like that anyway for model uh, for classic for I'm sorry regression model evaluation we have several values that we can compute the probably the most common one is what is known as the root mean squared error so it's a popular formula to measure the error rate of a regression model error rate notice it can be compared between models whose errors are measured in the same unit so it can be used to compare models now the formula to compute the RMSE is as follows the square root of the summation for all instances from 1 to n p of i minus a of i squared over n n is the number of instances in our data so if you notice here this data set n is the number of instances so we need to know the number of instances how many instances do we have p is the predicted value for the ith instance and a is the actual value so we get the predicted value subtract the actual value square that get the sum for all instances and then divide by n and then get the square root of that we get the rmse or the, or the root mean squared error value it's quite straightforward and easy to compute the next one is the relative squared error or the rse Unlike RMSE, the relative squared error or RSE can be compared between models whose errors are measured in different units. The formula to do that for the RSE is summation for all instances of predicted value minus actual value squared over summation for all, in for all instances now. A bar is the um, average of the actual values minus ai squared i hope the uh, the formula makes sense p is predicted value a is, is the actual value and a bar is the average of the uh, or the mean of the actual values and i is the ith instances n is the number of instances so we loop through all the instances and we get the predicted and actual values and compute these values here that's the r uh, relative squared error the next one is is the mean absolute error the mean absolute error or a mae has the same unit as the original data uh, and it can only be compared between models whose errors are measured in the same units so it's similar to RMSE slightly different what we do here is instead of squaring what we do is we subtract the actual value from the predicted value for each instance and get the uh, absolute value so if it's negative then we remove the negative yes so we always get positive values sum that over all instances and we divide by n if you remember the RMSE we used to get the square yes but here and then get the square root of the entire entire number no what we do here is we just get the absolute value 
of the difference between the predicted and the actual value of each instances so we look through all instances and then we divide by the number of instances again easy and straightforward to compute the next one is the relative absolute error or the RLE like the the one we saw before like the uh, um, a relative squared error the relative absolute error RAE can be compared between models whose errors are measured in different units and again here it's very similar to the RSE if you remember the RSE but now we don't do squaring but we have the absolute value I'm sorry we have the absolute value P is the predicted I is the actual values and A bar is the um, average of the actual values remember here we're dealing with numerical values yes real values so pi minus ai for the ith instance we look through all instances and the number of instances is n again as you can see here we look through all the instances um, now we have another one it's called co coefficient of determination the coefficient of determination or the r2 summarizes the explan explanatory power of the regression model and is computed from the sum of squares terms so it's computed from sum of, from sum of squares so the R2 describes the proportion of variance of the dependent variable explained by the regression model so what we do here is um, we compute coefficient of determination R square which is SSR over SST SSR is the sum of squares and um, the SST is the sum of squares total so we can compute them as you can see here if the regression model is perfect then the SSE error the sum of squares error is 1 if the regression model is a total failure the SSE is equal to SST no variance is explained by regression and R2 is 0 so R2 is SSR over SST SST is this sum here sum of squares total so we sum y minus y bar y is uh, the um, y bar is the average of the actual uh, values and y is y is the actual value and the sum of squares for the regression SSR is uh, the sum of y dash which is the predicted value minus y dash bar which is the average or the mean of all the predicted values of course squared and here squared and then the sum of squares error the SSE is the sum of y minus y dash y is the actual and y dash is the predicted and then it is actually squared as you can see I hope these things make sense very simple summations as long as we have the actual value and the predicted value then these are straightforward to use remember that bar means average so y bar is average of real value of actual values y is actual value y hash or y dash is the predicted y dash bar is the average of the predicted average or mean of course and we loop through all instances so this should be for i and i from 1 to n n is the number of instances standards standardized residual errors plot that we can use these plots these plots uh, are useful visualization tool in order to show the residual dispersion patterns on a standardized scale you know uh, there are no substantial differences between the pattern for a standardized residual plot and the pattern in the regular re residual plot the only difference is the standardized scale on the y-axis which allows us to easily detect potential outliers now this is a sample plot for the standardized residual residuals or standardized errors and as you can see here we plot this value D and we have uh, so, uh, so, so, so <coughs> as you can see here po 0 0.5 1 1.5 2.5 and then minus 0.5 minus 1 minus 1.5 and minus 2 and for every uh, value of D the way we computed DI is EI over SE EI is uh, for the ith instance or the ith observation N is the number of observation or number of instances the ith instance e for the ith instance is y i minus y hash i or y dash i basically what that means is the actual value of i minus the predicted value of i that's e and then s e is the square root of s s e over n minus k minus 1 s s e we've learned how to compute it here s s e the sum of squares error so 
we look through all the instances or all the observations and we subtract the predicted value for each instance from the real value of that same instance and we square that and we get the sum and that square root of SSE over n minus k minus 1 n is the number of observations or number of instances k is the number of predictors or the number of uh, features or the number of descriptors as we mentioned before i.e. the number of columns apart from the class column minus 1 so n minus k minus 1 k is the number of predictors again as we mentioned before some people call them predictors some people call them features some people call them attributes but they all mean the same thing I hope this makes sense I hope you're enjoying these tutorials I'm going to stop here thanks again for watching and hopefully I will start explaining uh, the basic idea behind many of the data mining algorithms in my next tutorial series thanks again and I'll see you next time